because there's too many leaders in the room and nobody wants to go anywhere because they're all trying to out king and out queen one another for the right to lead. And you're negating all these different positions. If you are a king or a queen over nothing, then what are you a king or a queen of? Just in title? If you have nothing to lead, are you really a king or a queen? If you have nobody who is willing to support you to see your vision, are you really a king or a queen? And the thing is, if you're not, it's okay. There's so many Hey yo, what's good? This is your host, Taraj Rashan, and you are now tuned in to Taraj Cast Grains of Salt to Flavor Life's Meal. Yes, sir! If you're brand new, welcome to our show. But if you're coming back for another spectacular dose of Taraj Cast conversation, welcome back. Now you can take everything we say with a grain of salt. We simply just want to add some flavor to your meal. So if we're doing that, we're doing our job. Let's get it. Yo, it is it is so so good to be back. It feels so good to be back, y'all. Welcome back to To Ride Cast. Grains of salt to flavor life's meal. Oh man, I've missed y'all. I really have. So much has been going on. So much has been just happening. And I am so, 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 so happy to have the opportunity to come back to you all brand new and refreshed. And there's so much to do. There's so much to accomplish going forward. And I am ready. I am excited. I am here for it. And if anything, what I first and foremost want to do is just thank all of you, all of you, for just showing the love that you've shown like it, there's there's nothing like knowing that you have the support and the love and the the patience of those who continue to rock with you and continue to support you continue to be there for you you know even in the times where you may be uncertain where where you know, things are going to go. You may be uncertain about how things are going to play out. Like, I, I, I can't I can't stress this enough. I, I, I love you and I thank all of you. You all know who you are. And I just want to say that I, I'm, I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be back. I'm, I'm glad to be able to lend my voice to this microphone in front of me and then you know, for those of you who take the time to listen, for, for, for you to even fill your ears with what I have to say, you know, that means so much to me. And so I just, it's, it's nothing but gratitude over here. There's nothing but pure gratitude over here. So again, everyone, thank you. Thank you. I'm glad we're back and we are going to get into it. Now, today's topic is actually one that's going to be just a, a, a little bit a little bit controversial. Um, it's it's probably going to make you not like me for a little bit, but I promise I have a good reason for the way that I'm going to be tackling this particular subject. And you know what? Let me just go ahead and get into it. I'm going to be talking about today the fact that we ain't all royalty. No, we're not. And when I say this, I'm talking about those of us who call ourselves kings and queens. And and this is specifically for those of us who are born in this country and 
we call ourselves kings and queens. It's become a trend. It's become the 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 thing to do to add to you know our our, our self esteem and whatnot. I'm I'm gonna talk about why we ain't all royalty. But I'm not just going to leave it at that. So I, I hope that y'all are able to bear with me as we tackle this subject because I, I feel like it really needs to be talked about because I feel like even these terms are abused so much. So before we get into that, as you already know, we got to take care of our house cleeping details. So if you would like to take our show with you on the go, just know that we are hosted on virtually all major podcast streaming platforms, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Audible, iHeartRadio, and even on Facebook. Just search Tarodcast on Google or your favorite podcast and social media apps to find us. Also, Patreon shout out to our patrons, Wave Parker, Janae, Erica. Thank you for your continued love and support. Please know that it is because of you that this show is even possible. And if you are a new listener and you believe in Tarotcast and would like to receive exclusive Patreon perks, as well as get our show ad-free, sign up at www.patreon.com forward slash Tarotcast. That's www.patreon.com forward slash Tarotcast. Also, if you're needing natural oils for ultimate hydration and care for your hair and skin, then hit up the Resilient Lotus. You can also use promo code TARADCAST to receive a discount on your purchase. Also, if you are looking for some dope customizable visuals for your next logo, flyer, album cover, or animated video, check out at Rose Graphism on Instagram to take your marketing to the next level. And last but certainly not least, if you're in need of music for your next project, podcast, cipher, or study session. Get in touch with V Dizzle, aka producer V Dizzle, the exclusive producer of all of this episode's music. And honestly, for all the music going forward, we got V Dizzle who is helping our podcast and helping us to elevate it with his talent and his ear and his just just everything that goes into his music. So make sure to get in touch with this man. As always, links and contact information for everyone in this housekeeping segment will be in our episode notes. And now, a letter to our legacy. The first letter goes out to all the daughters of the world. You have and always will have value outside of a man. We as men, as fathers, as husbands, as brothers... It is our responsibility to respect your humanity, to protect your vulnerability, to provide for your necessities, and to love you in the purest, most honest way possible. We possess every tool we need to make sure that we are ready and right for you. Until we discover that for ourselves and have the confidence to show this part of ourselves to you authentically, daughters, focus on yourself. Focus on your goals. Focus on your dreams. Now tell your kids to go live their life. That includes you too, Sayla. Mm, okay. Jeez. All right, y'all. So let's go ahead and talk about this subject matter, okay? 
like I told y'all, I said we ain't all royalty. And I want to talk about this, but I want to establish the background first. So first, let's do this. Let's just go over a brief recap of our history in this country. And I'm mainly talking about black Americans. I'm not talking about African Americans. I'm not talking about uh, uh, first generation, you know, African Americans. I'm, you know, I'm not talking about African people. I mean, you know, I'm talking about black Americans, naturalized black Americans whose history in this country is coming from the, the post slave era whose ancestors you know when it comes to the census and, and everybody whose records were lost before 1870 you know i'm talking about those of us those of us who are unfortunately here and existing with names that are not african at all they are european in their way they're european in their in their history you know our, our names don't have anything to tie back to where our ancestors ancestors used to live so this is who i'm talking about now i'm not excluding anybody from listening to this but when it comes to this particular message i'm talking about the black american people who have if you've had a Ancestry.com or a 23andMe DNA test, the ones who have European in your blood and not by choice, you know, the ones who have, you know, all these different places and it's not just from Africa, you know, this is who I'm talking about, okay? Because our history in this country is incredibly, incredibly complicated. It's incredibly unfair. And there is so much that has not yet been revealed to us about those who have paved the way for our existence in this country. There is so much that apparently people are sitting on when it comes to documents that help explain who we are and who our families were. And we don't have access to that. So it's like our, our, our history in this country is, is a void and it's inexplicably tied together with white Americans because of how things were in this country. And so we, we, we can't negate that. We have to talk about that. We have to address this because when it comes to who we are, a lot of who we are is tied up with them. Now, when it comes to, when it comes to, when I say them, I'm, I'm not talking about all white people. I'm talking about the, the, the white people who knew what they were doing when it came to having slaves, owning slaves and all this stuff, you know, to, you know, just, just that whole, that whole idea of profiting from another person. I'm not talking about, you know, indentured servants. I'm not talking about Irish people, you know, I'm talking about those of us who have continued to still be under the thumb of the remnants of an old system that has now evolved in this way today to continue on a lot of the same ideologies from slavery you know and and continuing to treat us in many different loose ways as if we are still enslaved so you know we have to talk about these things the things that happened the things that that led us to this point that happened before 1870 you know all the all the all the records and things like that that were just somehow lost or maybe people's families are sitting on them or whatever the case is like our history in this country is tied together with white american people that's just what it is that's just what it is and also most of our culture has been lost and we've had to assemble a culture with scraps and remnants we we in this is one of the things that that we take a lot of pride in you know taking scraps and remnants and taking nothing taking the unwanted pieces that nobody likes and figuring out a way to use them in order to make something out of it 
you know and I, I don't think this is a bad thing at all because if, if there's anything that I know about this particular way of being is that we have the ingenuity we have the creativity we have so much that is within us that allows us to make something out of nothing like when it comes to just survival and, and being able to move forward and to even not even attract the attention of certain people you know taking the smallest taking the unwanted taking the crumbs and doing miraculous things with them is something that we have been known to do and that is also part of our history it's also part of a lot of how we have evolved our culture it involves just this 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 consistent level of ingenuity creativity you know stick to itiveness that has defined many of us for generations and this this attitude this this finding a way out of no way attitude a lot of us know what that is a lot of us know what that what that is like what that feels like it's 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 also evolved into that that hustle mentality where it's just like you know what you need to do you know the moves that you need to make in order to make it happen right and you know that that is something that I, I will forever I will forever be proud of when it comes to who we are because yeah it's like you know we we all know how to hustle and it's just one of those things where you know when you do it it's because it's necessary you know it's it's that part of us that understands that we have to make something happen so that way the rest of us don't suffer like you know there's nothing wrong with that at all you know i just know and and we all just know that it comes from that mindset of survival and having to make something out of literal nothing and you know one of another one of the things i want to talk about here is is how the actual traditions and practices that we could have had have effectively been erased and replaced with the american dream and christianity now you know I, i'm again I, i'm not if if you're all pro america and stuff like that i mean hey i'm i, I was born in this country okay I, I i i just i'm an american by birth okay i'm not here to just sit here and try and you know just just downplay everything about this country but i mean there's a lot of you know people are talking about critical race theory and whatnot and how certain things don't need to be talked about in schools i'm like you know what if you come to my podcast and this is one of the few places where you can actually get a little bit of truth then by all means because i'm just like i don't want to i don't want to deal with people who feel like black history is not american history you know where it is just relegated to february i'm like nah it's it's the whole month it's the whole year it's 365 366 on leap years black history is still american history so whether it's talked about just during one month and that's when you feel like you tolerate it okay but just know over here on to Rodcast, grains of salt the flavor lights meal we're going to be talking about things like this all year <laughs> we're going to be talking about things that that affect the, the the black american community all year we're going to be talking about history and things like that all year and so I, I really hope that you are prepared for that type of conversation because it's it's not going to be something that i am ever going to hold back on because our history in this country is very turbulent you know to the point to where it has created a void when it comes to us and so, you know, I, I want to talk about these things because it, it also allows us to understand not only where we're coming from, but also where we need to go. So when it comes to this part of where we are in our history, you know, 
it, it was replaced with the the American dream and it was replaced with Christianity. Some of the things that, that we hold on to the most. For us as black Americans, we hold on to Christianity harder than we will ever hold on to any other tradition that could have possibly been remembered from the time of our ancestors. And the thing is, most of those traditions have been forgotten. They had been beaten out of us. They had been assimilated out of us to the point to where, yes, we adopted names that were not ours. And yes, we adopted ways of acting, ways of being that were not ours, that we looked to other people to see because we had to assimilate. And one of the best ways to assimilate, also one of the best ways to educate was through Christianity. Now, you know, again, I Christianity was one of those things where it was used to keep our ancestors under control. It was one of the books, one of the thought processes, one of the religious tools used to also educate. A lot of our enslaved ancestors learned how to read, learned how to speak from reading and engaging in the Bible, being taught the Bible. And if that is something that you are being exposed to on a consistent basis, of course you're going to learn about it. Of course you are going to be a part of this religion. Of course you are going to find the ways where the Bible talks about your status as a human being. As a human being, you're going to find the way where the Bible talks about your status and figure out the best way to be okay with it because the people who are in power don't see you as human, but they will give you this to make you feel justified in your status. And that's the part, that's the part that, that for me, Ah, you know, and it's, and it's not like I can say that I would act any different. It's not that I can say that I would do anything any differently. I can't. I wasn't born during those times. I can only speak freely now. And so honestly, when it comes to my ancestors, I know that my culture was lost. My original family name was lost but I would not be able to speak freely without their sacrifices, without them believing that they could have a family that would exist all the way up to this point. I realized I would not be here. I would not be able to speak as freely without everything that they did. And some of them, I will never know their name. I will never know their name. But at the same time, I know that a lot of them were Christian though. <laughs> I know a lot of them were Christians, right? You know, because Christianity is it's, it's a good way. It's a good way to keep people in line that, that you know, the, the, the Bible's got a lot of rules. It's got a lot of rules. It keeps a lot of people meek and lonely keeps a lot of people in line and the best way to make sure that our community is in line is to give them religion because it doesn't even even nowadays it doesn't matter who you are what you do as long as you still claim Christian people are still gonna find a way to make an exception for you and that's that's how it is that's how it is because honestly, we have, we have ventured into the entertainment industry. We have, even throughout the course of history, black people have been the ones who have made some of the biggest strides in the entertainment industry. However, most of us, especially looking at history, most of us, most of the names that we know, most of the people who we saw making some of the most shocking changes, they were our most beloved entertainers. 
And then, both then and now, we look to a lot of our entertainers for guidance and to be the gateway towards the changes that we wanna see. We do, we do. So, you know, when it comes to those who, who, who entertain us, you know, we're always looking to see or, or to get behind an entertainer, a black entertainer who is smart or at least sounds smart. Because then it's like we can justify our liking of them, our liking of their craft also with their mindset, right? And there are certain people out here who we get behind and we're just, we're hoping that they do something or say something that is in line with how we think or in line with the curvature of trends or the curvature of things happening in the world. And they, they say something prophetic to where now we can go public with our justification of liking this person or following this person. You know, it has been this way for decades because most of our entertainers who look like us have been the ones that we have also been looking to in order to communicate the message of our existence. And honestly, being an entertainer is something that also comes out of that enslaved system. Because if you were good at something, if you could entertain other people, then they wanted you. They wanted you to feel like you had value even though as a human you had innate value already. They just did not allow you to act on it. But if you could entertain, if you could entertain in some way, then you got special privileges. And then even when it comes to, I mean, just look at history. There were, there were all kinds of black entertainers out here who battled with white audiences because their their level of 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 entertainment their level of musicality their level of prowess and talent it surpassed so many others and our sound was different and so when we got the opportunity to, to, to have access to these entertainers who were not only performing for our audiences, but were performing for white audiences, most of the time our entertainers had some of the loudest voices because they were right there in front of those white American crowds. And so their impact, they knew, they knew that if, if we could get these people to fall in love with us, then maybe, just maybe, we could, we could hopefully convince some of them that you, 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 there's nothing wrong with listening to what we have to say. We are entertainers, but we are also people. And I want you to know that our people are also people. You know, so even back then, entertainers, entertainers were some of the people that we look to the most, that we look to the hardest. Even now, even now when a lot of our entertainers, you know, you, you really have to, to vet and do your research on certain people because you can't just be out here following anybody. You can't, you can't, because not everybody is out here being an entertainer and also being able to articulate their thoughts, being able to show that they're able to critically think. You know, there are a lot of people out here who look and sound the same. And it's crazy how that is. And very few of them have the ability to think critically or to, or, or very few of them even possess the ability to care about anything that's bigger than themselves other than the money that they're making you know and we 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 really have to understand that because for so many of us we look to our entertainers even in our own communities if you are not entertaining to us in some sort of way we are not going to pay you attention and that is very rudimentary thinking you know and, and, and that's, you know, that's, that's, that I, I've seen this growing up as well. 
If you do not provide some sort of entertainment, then why pay attention to you? And that's sad because that shows a clear lack of critical thinking. It shows a clear lack of even thinking of ourselves as human. And that's not right. That's not right. You know, it's not right to think that way. It's not right to treat your own that way. Because so many of us, we, we, we have differing ways of thinking. We have ways of thinking that don't necessarily follow the regular or the traditional path when it comes to how we are and who we are as people. And so thinking differently is not something that is bad. It's something that needs to be explored. But the thing is, most of us are not equipped to think outside of the box. You know why? Because the box itself is black on the inside and we feel comfortable being inside the box. The box itself, being in the box, thinking in the box, the box itself is black on the inside. And so we feel comfortable thinking in the box because thinking outside the box requires us to step out into the light. It requires us to be seen, to be heard, to be felt, to be vulnerable, to be open. And we're not used to that. And so that's why, as my, as my wife will say, we have a whole Neil deGrasse Tyson out here, genius level intellect. We have a whole Neil deGrasse Tyson out here and we show him no attention. He's a genius, astrophysicist and all this, all these credentials. Like we have people out here who actually have dedicated their lives, who look like us to doing the types of work that is worthy of attention, worthy of gathering around and listening. But no, because people like that don't entertain us. They are not entertainers. We don't want to hear what they have to say. You know, we'd rather lean on people like T.I. And all he's done is just read a dictionary. Or we, we lean on people like Killer Mike, who has to embarrass us in order to get his message heard. Because I remember watching that black panel, and as soon as he said the word niggas, you know, that got everybody's attention. That is sad. That is sad. And even even his music, again, you know, even his music is, it, I, I, I've heard some of his music. I have some of his music. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm just like, that. that's Killer Mike? Oh, okay, all right, you know. But I mean, you know, to each his own. But at the same time, entertainers. Entertainers that we are looking to. Kanye West, Kanye West, entertainer. He's, you know, grown a lot bigger, but at the same time, he is a creator, but also a lot of people hang off of his words as well. Joe Budden, Joe Budden. I feel like a lot of people forget that he rapped, but but he does rap and he has a podcast as well. And we, you know, but again, he's an entertainer. We, we, we look to him for certain pieces of advice, history. Now, I'm not saying that it's wrong to look to people for their perspectives, but when you are pinning all of your moral integrity on trying to align with an entertainer and subscribe to their thought processes, that's when you have a problem because not everybody is built the same way. Like, I'm not going to, you know, walk up to uh g herbo or lil baby or whatever and say you know what how do you feel that black americans can continue to further progress in this country by embracing their creativity and thinking outside the box i'm not thinking i'm not considering them for these types of questions i'm not looking at them as being people who can give me the answers to questions that actually require some thought because I know that they are not equipped for it. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna look at, you know, 21 Savage or Lil Xan or anybody, you know, anybody who just looks, sounds trippy red. I'm not looking into anybody that looks, sounds the same, has the same flow, whatever this, whatever it is, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, because I know that they are not equipped for it. 
you know? So there is no point in asking these types of questions until they are able to speak on it freely by themselves, you know, unprovoked. And it is something that ends up being important. Until it becomes important, it's not worth discussing. The thing is, for for us evolving and, and growing through the entertainment industry, you know, we are the ones that have become the trendsetters. We have. You know, we are the original influencers of language and music and fashion and, you know, just, just ways of being. We are those people. We are the ones who have created the trends that people follow even now. We are the ones who have done that. And because we have done that, our influence over this whole world is felt. We dominate music. We dominate even social media itself. We dominate all of it. And so many, as we've all have seen, there are people who do entire videos about how we as black American people have dominated so many different things. And the, fa and the fact that so many of the things that we do are stolen and whitewashed and repurposed and repackaged and reshipped out with free two-day shipping to any and everybody else to do and to also take credit for because a lot of people are not taking credit for uh, or not giving credit rather to all the things that we've created and so it's always going to be an uphill battle it, 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 it is it is it is you know it is because the world is not ready for our faces to be the faces of certain things you know so that's that's just part of it that's just part of it. it's part of the game it is and and also one of the things that we do is we bring in and uplift others who mimic us instead of giving our own the attention that we deserve again i'm talking about them them shoulder shimmying that that shoulder shimmying white kappa you know that that one white girl who just so happens to have a rhythm you know, we 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 uplift those because, again, they entertain us. So therefore, we make them and bring them into our fold. Knowing that regardless of whatever life they lived or where they came from, they can always go back. But because they show us a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of flavor, we welcomely or we, 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 we bring them in with the most welcoming arms. Now, I'm not saying this is a bad thing, but we accept a lot of people, yet we don't accept ourselves, even at the bare minimum. We can accept whole other people, but yet it is such a struggle, so hard to accept ourselves. So with that being said, with all this stuff that's being said, are we all really kings and queens? Because in the last five to seven years, that has been one of the biggest trends that has been taking over our, our mindset, calling ourselves kings and queens. And I feel like the, the, the ideas of being just innate royalty have influenced our self-image, both in positive and in negative ways. I mean, you know, again, it's, it's about, it's about self-esteem. It's about feeling important. It's about knowing that you have a destiny. It's about knowing that your place in this world is marked by your choices, marked by your self-esteem, your confidence, who you are. And if you walk a certain way, if you talk a certain way, if you give a certain energy, that, that in and of itself is powerful. And we are thinking of it as us being descendant from people who moved the same way. The ideas of royalty influencing and continuously influencing everything about us, how it has affected our ability to set trends and to even influence other people who are not of color to start adopting this terminology towards us and also towards themselves. One of the first people I can think of who does this is DJ Khaled. That man ain't black. He ain't black. 
but he's over here calling himself a king. And I remember, I remember when one of the most controversial things that he said about what kings don't do when it comes to their women. I'm not going to say it right now. That's that's a whole other conversation. But, you know, like, listen, listen to this. This man is not black, but he is somebody that we have welcomed in and we know who his name is. And yeah, he's talented as far as what he's been able to do, how he's been able to collaborate, you know, making beats, different things like that. You know, yes, I will give the man his credit. He is mad talented. He has a he has a good eye for certain people. But again, when it comes to this whole trend of being kings and queens that we have started, he's one of those people who I can think of first that has adopted this and he is not black. But that's just the way, of, that's just the way of the world, isn't it? You know, that's just the way of the world because the things that we do, the things that we do, people are like, ooh, cool, neato, oh my God, yeah, I should do that. And then they start adjusting. They start changing to, better integrate themselves with this change so that way it feels more natural it feels more fluid so it's not now just something that we've created now it's it's global now it's universal you know now you know there are all kinds of people calling us and calling themselves kings and queens you know, to the point to where they, they now feel like they have the permission to tell us that we are kings and queens, you know, and to keep our head up, kings and queens. You are a king. I've been called king by, by, by all kinds of people who are not black. I have. I have. And I'm just like, you know, in, in my head, I'll, you know, I'll get to that later. I'm, I'm, I'm jumping the gun. I'm jumping the gun. But the thing is, what a lot of us don't want to talk about is that there is a need, an overwhelming need for validation due to the void that is our existence in this country. That's what it is. There is a overwhelming need for validation because of the void that is our existence in this country. We call ourselves kings and queens. We call ourselves royalty. We speak these things. We manifest these things and these 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 feelings and these self images. We manifest these things so hard because for most of us thinking that our existence in this country is lost. It's something that we can't we don't want to wrestle with. We can't wrestle with that. It is better to reinvent ourselves as royalty it's better to say it loud and to say it proud so that way when people look at us they can say oh that's a king right there oh that's a queen right there but we don't know we don't know we truly do not know for those of us who cannot trace our history back to or through the wall of 1870 we don't know we don't know. We do not know if we were kings or queens at all. There's no documentation. And so for us, it is better to assume the mantle, to assume the role, to assume the title of being a king or a queen, because now, now we are at a point to where we have every equal and equitable opportunity in most cases to assert ourselves, to assert our talents, to assert our confidence, to assert our dominance, and to be looked at with actual respect. Now we have the ability to do that. But what we need to talk about is how calling ourselves kings and queens without proper research to verify is nothing but a coping mechanism to overcome the majority of our inadequacies. When are we gonna talk about this? Now, because this is what I do on my show. We need to talk about this because honestly, for a lot of people, a lot of people I can look at and I can see that you are royalty. You, I, I see you. I see what you have built up for yourself. And I can, I can understand how you call yourself a king or a queen. I can understand that. 
I see what you have accomplished. I appreciate what you are doing. So therefore, if you want to call yourself that, cool, cool. But we cannot sit up here and pretend that calling ourselves royalty in any way is not part of a bigger coping mechanism, just as Christianity was when it came to getting over being enslaved. It's a coping mechanism. It's the same thing. King and queen in our community, in our culture is now becoming a new religion. And I'm not talking about clothes. It is becoming a new religion to where now when we see ourselves, when we see one another, it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter how horrible of a person you are. It doesn't matter how you treat people. We will call you kings and queens. We will do that. And I'm just like, some of us who actually do care about the state of our people, the state of ourselves, actually uplifting other people, yes, yes. If you wanna look at somebody like that as a king or a queen, somebody who really has a community at heart, somebody who is actually doing the types of things that are pushing us forward, whether they are loud or quiet, in front of or behind the scenes, if they even accept being called kings and queens, you know, then, then at that point, okay. But not everybody is a king or a queen. Most people are saying this to cope with their inadequacies because those of us who are not fully realized individuals adopt the term king and queen to boost ourselves up. And you know that's true. You know it's true. There are a lot of us out here who are not truly kings and queens at all but we adopt this term to boost ourselves up because at least it makes us feel good about something even though we're out here doing the dirtiest grimiest you know just just the the, the craziest things the craziest things we're doing it to other people and we give zero you know we we get we give no blanks whatsoever you know, we, we give none of that. And we're out here just doing all kinds of things. And yet we got people walking up to these trifling ass people saying, King, you shouldn't be doing this. Queen, you shouldn't be. They ain't no king or queen. You are not a fully realized individual, period. So there is no level of attention that even I would ever give you that would make you feel like royalty. For what? I know what kind of person you are. So I'm not about to throw this label on you with the hopes of making you feel better for yourself or the hopes of hoping that you will change or whatever because most people do not most people do what is beneficial to them most people most of us are selfish by nature that's just how it is we're selfish by nature and so we you know, we we have to we have to address that we have to talk about that because there are a lot of things that we do not want to admit there's a lot of shadow work we do not want to do when it comes to figuring ourselves out. And so my question to you before we get into our first commercial break is, are we all kings and queens? Are we all really kings and queens? That's something we really need to think about because when it comes to our history, there's not a lot of research that says that all of us, every single one of us biologically and, and family tree wise are kings and queens. So ask yourself, are we all kings and queens? And when you ask yourself that question, get to the root, get to the reality, understand the question that's being asked because it's not saying, are we capable of doing or are we not capable of doing great things, momentous things? I'm not asking that question. I'm simply asking, are we all kings and queens? And if some of us are not, then what does that make us? And when you get to that answer, is that still a wonderful thing? So think about that. We're gonna take our commercial break and we'll be right back. We'll get right back into it. Make sure y'all are staying hydrated. Of course, stay hydrated. Yes, we need that. And we will be right back. This is Tarotcast.
All right, y'all. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to Taradcast, grains of salt to flavor life's meal. Now, make sure if you haven't already, find us on all social media at Taradcast. You can also find us on Patreon.com, www.patreon.com forward slash Taradcast. Make sure you're supporting us there. Also, if you want to continue just being a listener, we would love for you to share our show. You know, there's so many different ways of supporting and we want to make sure that we have the ability to reach as many people as we can because the last thing that we want to do is just to be some secluded sequestered podcast no that is not the goal so if you love what we're doing and you want to share our show please share our show with people that you know just hit that share button anywhere you are share it to your social media share it in the text message share it in the email if you want to you know share our show with people you know so that way we can continue to grow as a show and we can grow as a family that's that's one of the main things that we want to do we want to be able to reach more people and so if you have the ability to share our show with people you know please do so that means the world to me i thank you for that and you just being here is something that i am very very appreciative of because you could be doing anything else you could be listening to anybody else and because you are here listening to me rant and ramble about this particular subject i still appreciate it you have no idea. <laughs> so thank you. And now I, I want to get into um, the, the part of the conversation where we really, where we really break this down. Okay. Because unfortunately we ain't all royalty. Okay. The simple truth is that not all of us are the Kings and Queens. We call ourselves. We're not, we're not, we're not. Okay. We're not, but that's okay. That's okay. I actually had a conversation with a friend of mine not too long ago. Um, it was on Instagram. She shared with me a video. And um, the video was this little boy who was talking, um, who was talking just crazy and reckless and smoking and stuff like that. And I was just like, you know, who, who's, 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 who's little thug is this? Who's, who's thug junior is this? And I realized, I realized when, when I said that, I, I offended her. I did. I did. It is it is the rhetoric of the masses, the rhetoric of the media, you know, because I am automatically looking at this young child who is smoking and talking very hood like and I'm calling him this, you know, a little thug. But you know what? Most of our existence is socioeconomic. That's what it is. Most of our understanding is socioeconomic. It doesn't get any further, any more complicated. It doesn't get any more in depth than that. Those of us who have grown up in the hood and, you know, myself included, I know what that's like. And so watching this little boy, I mean, somebody, I'm like, I can tell that there is not a father in the home. I can tell that, you know, his, 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 whoever is there, whoever those influences are on the block, on the corner, on the porch, they're the ones who are putting this little boy up to this and giving him this this cigarette and giving him this this way of speaking and the vocabulary that he has at this age and the subject matter that he's talking about at this age is very socioeconomic because even the lowest points of our existence we still want people to entertain us somebody thought enough or maybe that little boy thought enough whoever to record themselves or to record this little boy speaking in this way for entertainment Again, like I said before, if you are not entertaining us, who are you? Who are you? And so, yeah, I remember saying what I said, and I and I can totally understand where my friend was coming from because she has a lot of hope. She has a lot of a lot of drive when it comes to thinking that there are kings and queens in all of us. I understand it. I get it. I used to be that way. I did. I used to be that way. It was called my save the world phase back when I was like. 19 20 21 22 you know that was my save the world phase where i saw nothing but the good in everyone but the thing is not everybody has good in them a lot of people don't care about even what they have in them and so therefore they are not going to be the people who actually care about what's going on they're not going to be the ones who actually care about having a title or looking at themselves as different because their socioeconomic status is all that they know. Now, I applaud any and 
all people who are going out into these neighborhoods and mentoring young boys and being the kinds of people who are really providing that that service and, and, and filling in where a lot of our own have never truly learned how to fill in. Like, I applaud all of you all's efforts. If you're really about that life and you're really out here, you know, knocking down those corners and, and, and knocking down those doors and trying to get people to understand their value and, and to have that sort of mentorship, I, I applaud you with, with all of my heart because that is a mission that is forever ongoing. It's a mission that's forever thankless. And those who are actually doing it, like really pounding the pavement and doing it, like I, I have all the utmost respect for you. But I also know that there are certain people out here who do not want to be saved. They don't. They don't. Because it doesn't fit with how they see the world. It doesn't fit with their current status in life. It doesn't fit with the worldview. It doesn't fit with their understanding. It doesn't fit with what they have grown to understand about themselves. And so therefore, trying to call those of us who do not want to be saved kings and queens is a waste of energy. You know, not everybody is going to see things the way that we see them. And the thing is, I know for me, I can understand when somebody believes that they are right. For the majority of my life, I thought I was always right all the time as well. But I had to realize that, you know, when it comes to understanding somebody else's point, they may have lived a completely different life. And so the way that they see things is the way that they see things based on their socioeconomic level. That's it. That's how the majority of us grew up socioeconomically in poor neighborhoods, lower middle class to impro impoverished areas. A lot of us grew up that way. Yeah, I did, too, up to a certain point. When it, when it comes to things like that, the way that we are, the way that we think, the way that we move, the way that we feel, the way that we understand is based on socioeconomic levels. And so therefore, not, at, not all of us are kings and queens because there are some people who choose just, just to be completely ignorant out here. There are certain people who choose to just be completely removed from anything that's positive and everything that's selfish. I'm not calling those people kings and queens. I'm not wasting my breath, hoping that they will change so that way they can hopefully be worthy of the title. For what? For what? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me. Because when I think about that conversation with that little boy and I called him, I said, whose little thug is this and whatnot? I remember it, it broke my friend's heart because I'm, I'm speaking a little on this child who has been completely socioeconomically influenced. And the thing is, the path that he is on, if nobody intervenes, it's going to continue to get worse. That little boy is going to hurt people. He's going to hurt himself. And I hate that. I hate that. But I know that I also cannot be everywhere at once to try and speak reality into people. I have to start at home and work outward. I have to start with my daughter and work outward. For those of you who have the, the drive to, to work in the community and to, and to do these things, again, I applaud you. I do. I, I, I hope that you are able to really mentor kids and, and, and let them know how they need to be because when i saw this video it broke my heart it did but at the same time i'm just like i already see the path where he's going because so many other people have gone down that path starting at that age i know some of these people i grew up i went to school with a lot of these people some of them have grown up to be wonderful people some of them they're dead whether it's physically or mentally they're dead that's just what it is. Not everybody can or wants to be saved. Because when your perception is from a certain standpoint, that's all you know. That's all you care about. It doesn't make sense to shift. Again, I say this all the time. For a lot of people, it takes something truly tragic to happen before we are able to truly understand how we need to change. And that's if we decide to truly understand what we need to do to change or to improve or to be better. So no, 
I, when, it, when, it, when it came to that conversation, I'm like, yeah, I understand where you're coming from, friend. But I'm not taking back what I said. Because socioeconomically, there are a lot of people who do not want to change. So therefore, I am not about to call them kings or queens. For what? For what? Because honestly, one of the things that we do in order to make ourselves feel better is that we will desperately try to compensate and, and sometimes even overcompensate for the ignorance of our own. Not everybody wants to see the light. Nobody, not everybody wants to understand their value because oftentimes the influences around us are much stronger than the influences that we have within ourselves. And one of the biggest key components into creating a strong, a strong sense of your own self-influence and your own self-image is having people around you that care about that. People around you that can tolerate that because when you become your own person, you have your own thoughts. You think critically, you move differently, you question a lot of things. And so even as a parent raising a daughter, even now, I'm having to truly and continuously learn that when it comes to raising her as, as someone who can think critically and be independent and, and, and be loving, she could be a reader. I have to accept all that that comes with. So that way, when she goes out into the world, I don't have to worry about her. I have to accept that because she is going to be someone who is going to stand on her own two feet, who's not going to be afraid to stand up for herself and others. See, I know the influence that I'm putting onto my daughter. I know what I want to do. I know the influence that I, that I have when it comes to my siblings. I know what I want to do. I know who I want to be. I know what types of, of advice I want to give them. Again, I, there are people out here whose jobs it is to save the world. I will let you do that. But for me, I have to save my world before I can go out into the world. I have to do that first. I have to start with what's closest to me. That's where I start. That's not a bad thing. At least I don't think it's a bad thing because some people want to start out in the world. I want to start when it comes to my world and work out while other people want to work with the world and work in. But you know, even even with that being said, there are there are so there are so many of us. There are so many of us out here that we 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 feel like we can save everybody and it's just it's just not true. Sometimes, sometimes the socioeconomic influence, the look of our surroundings, sometimes is just too strong. It's just too strong. And in, 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 when it comes to our history, we have been relegated to some of these communities. We have been relegated to live in some of these places, to believe that that's all there is. Belief is a strong thing. It is a strong thing. It's the reason why when it comes to Christianity, we can believe in so many heavenly rewards and live the crappiest life here on earth because it is it is it has been written that your suffering will equal to heavenly rewards and so therefore you must continuously endure suffering to me there th that that still does not make sense when there are so many people out here thriving so you mean to continuously suffer for no reason is is is, is okay in your head okay in your mind one of the few things that you have and that you have abundance of rather is religion. You have that thought process. You have that book, even, even when it comes to entertainment, you know, you can have all these people who say all these different things, who talk about women, who talk about men, who talk about, you know, all these types of things in the graphic ways that they do, but get up on stage and still say the first thing that they say rather is I'd like to thank God. You know what? I, I stopped watching the BET Awards only because when it when it came to when it came to the different types of awards, you have all these different performances from all these different artists. And then y'all got the nerve to have a gospel section. 
Y'all got the nerve to have church in the middle of all the booty shaking and in the middle of all the misogyny, the misogynoir. You have the nerve to have a gospel section where y'all are talking about good. And I'm sorry, that that was that was that was from uh, uh, my six hundred pound life. You believe in good, Doctor Now? <laughs> but y'all have y'all have the audacity to sit here and, 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 and insert God into the middle of all this booty shaking and misogyny and cussing and walking around, you know, grabby your genitals and all that stuff. And I'm just like, we are so confused <laughs> because it's just like, you know, we we will do and say and 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 put out into the world all this stuff we will wear all this stuff but yet have the nerve to say i just want to thank god really <laughs> see it's it's for us it's just part of our culture it's part of our culture it's not what we really believe it's part of our culture because you know for most of the young people out here who are actually making a name for themselves it make their family proud for them to to see them saying i want to first thank god because we already know most of our history in this country deals with church there there are so many stories out here i, I went to church or my my dad left when i was a kid or my single mom raised me worked three four jobs and, and we went to church and i'm just like church is a huge part of our community and so while we're out here being trifling and ratchet and all this stuff and calling ourselves kings and queens we still have the nerve to say i want to thank god i'm not even a christian and i still find that to be embarrassing it's crazy because so many of our stories are like that so many of our stories start the same way and you know what and, and i feel like that even segues way into my next point because there's so many of us who are claiming to be kings and queens and the thing is that's not all of us. A lot of us are actually suited for other roles that would help out in these supposed kingdoms. There are other roles for us. Because think about it, if too many of us are kings and too many of us are queens, then who's doing everything else? No, not everybody is suited to be kings and queens, but that does not mean that your position is any less important or should be any less respected See, I think that's one of the key items there because we look at these titles because we want respect. We demand respect. We walk in the room, it's respect. You better give me the respect I deserve because I have earned it or else you will be canceled. You will be disregarded. I want nothing to do with you. We want that, but not all of us are equipped for that. Not all of us are equipped to handle the load that it takes to be an actual king or queen. Not all of us are equipped to do that. And we don't want to be. We just want the title. We just want to be able to walk into a room and be like, yes, respect me. And you haven't even earned it. We don't deserve it. So many of us are trifling and ratchet and we're broken and we still want to call ourselves kings and queens. No until you are fully realized until you are self-actualized until you've done the shadow work until you've done and, and made peace with the traumas in your life do not call yourself a king or a queen you are not there yet but you know what we all still have our roles because some of us out here are not built to be kings and queens some of us are not even built to try and fake it till we make it when it comes to being a king or a queen it's just not the case because the thing is even though it's not the case we should also take time to respect the importance of the roles in a working and functioning community and kingdom if we really want to start going into this, we need to start thinking about the different roles that built up a kingdom, that build up a community. Because some of those roles are like the record keepers, those who write everything down, the ones who tell the stories, the ones whose pen continues the legacy of the people in this kingdom, the people in this community, the ones whose words will be recorded for history to look back on and to read over, to understand the value. A record keeper is an important position. Storytellers, the original entertainers. Yeah, some of us are the entertainers. 
the ones who provide that sense of joy and laughter and lightness and wholeness, who inspire people to feel, who inspire people to get out of their shell. Yes, the storytellers, the entertainers are also important. The advisors, the ones who we call upon for advice, the ones who we call upon for mentoring, the ones who we call upon to get their perspective on certain questions, on certain topics, the ones who are, who are well-learned and, and well-read and not afraid to say that they don't know the answer, but this is what I do know. The advisors, the ones who continuously point us in the right direction. That's an important position. The strategists, the ones who are getting ready to go to war, the ones who understand what's at stake, where people need to be, how many people we need, the resources that we need, how we need to plan our attack. The strategists, the ones who are out here doing actual strategy, implementing actual strategy. The ones who are parts of these councils, the ones who are focusing all of their energy towards having a winning outcome, a winning scenario. They're important. Soldiers are important. The ones who are willing to go out and be on the front lines. The soldiers, the knights, the paladins, you know, all these people, the ones who are uh, who are unafraid to fight for the longevity and the freedom and the honor of the kingdom. The ones who are actually doing it because they have the right heart about it. They have the right mindset about it. And so therefore they are about it. Right. You know, there are people out here who are just specifically designed to be the soldiers, and that's okay. Caretakers, caretakers, the ones who take care of the young, the ones who take care of the old, the ones who take care of the sick. Caretakers. Caretakers are a huge part of the kingdom as well. A huge part. And they are the ones who also make sure that everybody's healthy. The caretakers. I mean, come on, who else? The builders, the builders, the ones who build everything, the ones who are carpenters, the ones who are good with their hands, the ones who are the blacksmiths, you know, the, the, the ones who, who, who make the tapestries, you know, the, the seamstresses, those who build, those who create, those who, who, like, y'all understand where I'm going with this? Y'all understand where I'm going with this? Because there are so many different people out here that all have value, but we don't give them value. We don't understand our own value in these types of roles because we're so concerned with being kings and queens and not everybody is designed to be kings and queens. I'm sorry, we're not. Because there's too many leaders in the room and nobody wants to go anywhere because they're all trying to out king and out queen one another for the right to lead. And you're negating all these different positions. If you are a king or a queen over nothing, then what are you a king or a queen of? Just entitled? If you have nothing to lead, are you really a king or a queen? If you have nobody who is willing to support you to see your vision, are you really a king or a queen? And the thing is, if you're not, it's okay. There are so many other positions in the kingdom, in the community that will allow you to be who you are. There is nothing wrong. There is nothing wrong with not being a king or a queen. Just know where you are loved and go where you are loved. Know where you can be used and go where you can be used and know where you will be appreciated and go where you will be appreciated. That's it. That's all you have to do. That's all that you have to do. Because I'm sorry, not all of us are kings and queens. We ain't all royalty. Not everybody is built to be at the top. And not everybody is built to handle that responsibility of being a leader. That's okay. It's okay. It's not for you. It's for somebody else. It does not make you any less important. It doesn't make you any less important. I want you to know that.
because I'm not I'm not sitting over here trying to just bash people and bash those of us who call ourselves kings and queens I'm not I just want you to understand that if you are truly not a king or a queen you still have value somewhere else and find that value accept that value understand it and work in it so that way you're not just a useless person claiming to be royalty when you could actually be helping out the entire community somewhere else you're not wasting your breath saying, oh, I'm a king, I'm a king, you need to respect me, I'm a king, or I'm a queen, I'm a queen. No, no, if you have certain talents that can be used somewhere else, it does not matter. Use them there. Benefit everyone. Benefit everyone. Because we need key players in our community who understand and use their talents with excellence. We need that. We truly, truly need that. That is who we need in order to help us go forward. It's the only way. Whatever you are good at, if you're doing it with excellence, you are a key player. You are a mover. You are a shaker in our community. Whether you're a king or a queen or not, if you're any one of the positions that we outlined earlier, if you are one of those positions, you are a key player. Nobody can tell you otherwise. You have your value. You have your understanding. You know what you need to do. Do it. Do it with excellence. Take pride in who you are and what you do because not everybody out here is built to handle the same responsibilities and that's okay. That's okay. We need to understand that that is okay because a lot of us, a lot of us, a lot of us, we do so many people wrong and yet we still have the nerve to think that we deserve to be in any leadership role, period. What? What? No. If we use our talents, if we use our skill sets with excellence, we will always have value. And recognizing the value in one another, from the lowest to the highest, will build strength, character, and unity within our community. That's a given. If we can give the same respect to the custodian, that we give to the CEO of a company that we're, we're actually, we're getting it. We're doing it right. At that point, we're doing it right. And if we can actually get that right, there's a lot more that we can get right as well. So y'all, I just, I just want to end this show by just saying that, you know, a lot of us, a lot of us, we spend too much time trying to make the title of king or queen fit us when what we really should be doing is taking time to figure out ourselves and to understand where we fit in the grand scheme. Because even though we might not all be kings and queens, it doesn't mean that we're not all important. It doesn't mean that we don't all have our role. It doesn't mean that we don't have something great to give back to this community and to give back to the world. It's just that we need to figure out specifically who we are and what we need to do in order to have the greatest impact. That's what we need to do. That's what we need to focus on. That's what we need to hone our talents and our skills and, and, and use those talents and skills to, you know, better everything for ourselves. We don't all have to be kings and queens to do that because we all have different roles that are suited just for us. And if we're not supposed to be the leader, that's okay. That's okay. Do everything you need to do with excellence and everything else will take care of itself. So that's our show, y'all. That's our that's our show. <laughs> you all know how to find us and support us. Make sure to leave us a five-star review and also take the conversation to our social media and our Patreon. Links will be in the details section of our show notes. And as I always say, wherever you are, whomever you are, I want to always encourage you to be more introspective and vulnerable with yourself. Know who you are, trust in who you are, love who you are. Thank you for listening, and as always, make every effort to find and keep your peace. Till next time.